Okay, so you should know how to solve this equation without the aid of a calculator if you're taking a math course like Algebra 2, College Algebra, certainly pre-calculus. But uh, even if you're not at that level of math, this is not that difficult and you can learn pretty easily how to solve this type of equation. But uh, as my little title uh, states right here, many of you don't know what to do or how to get started here. Uh, this is not that difficult and again this is a very important type of equation for you to be able to solve now uh, before i really give you any more hints about what's going on here i want to give you a full opportunity for you to solve this all on your own so if you can figure this out go ahead and put your answer into the comment section i'll show you the correct answer here in just one second and then of course i'll walk through the solution step by step and again if you're not at this uh you know, more advanced level of mathematics, I guarantee you, you'll be able to understand the solution as well. And again, we're not going to use our calculator for this particular problem, although you could, okay, use your calculator to solve this problem. We're not going to uh, use that. That is kind of part of the directions. All you're going to do is use that supercomputer that's located right up between your ears. That is so much better than any artificial intelligence. That's actual intelligence. So that's uh, more than enough a mental horsepower for you to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like, and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we have two to the x minus one power, all that uh, being divided by two to the three minus four x power, and this is equal to 16. We wanna solve for x. What is the answer? Let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. The answer is x is equal to eight fifths. Wow, so if you got this right without the aid of a calculator, well, that is very impressive. You definitely deserve an A++, a happy face, a 100%, multiple stars, so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving exponential equations, okay? That's what we're talking about here, an exponential equation. And even if you don't know what that means, I'll explain this uh, step by step in just one second. But let's just kind of get into this problem right now. And, and just, you know, talk about this from a big picture standpoint in algebra. So here we have a variable x and we have an equation. So in algebra, when you see an equal sign, that's an equation. So you're like, oh, I have an equation. So I need to start thinking about how to solve, uh, you know, an equation. Well, first of all, the first thing is once you recognize that you're dealing with an equation, you need to start thinking about what type of equation you're dealing with, okay? So let's just quickly, quickly highlight how important this is, right? So when you see an equal sign in algebra, you're like, oh, I got an equation. Well, what type of equation? Do you have a linear equation? Do you have a quadratic equation? Do you have a system of equation? Maybe you have a radical equation. Maybe you have a rational equation. Maybe you have a logarithmic equation. Maybe you have an exponential equation. You get the idea, right? How we solve these different type of equations are... Um, uh, they're different from one another, okay? Well, they have their own uh, strategies and techniques and procedures, if you will. So there are a lot of different type of equations in algebra, okay? And there's many more beyond this. So the way you get good at solving equations is literally just take it one step at a time, okay? That's why you have to take, uh, you know, great math notes and you have to practice this stuff, okay? But the first order of business is to recognize what we're dealing with and here we're dealing with an exponential equation because the variable what we're uh, trying to solve for x is located in the exponent position. So, for example, I have uh, if I have two to the third power, this three is the exponent. Okay, two is the base. The entire thing is a power. Okay, so if I'm solving an equation where the x is in the exponent location, this by um, definition would be an exponential equation. Now, typically, uh, you're going to, uh, when you see an exponential equation, you're going to be thinking to use logarithms, okay? 
So uh, this is uh, the most common way to solve exponential equations. And when you see a logarithmic equation, you're going to use exponents. That's because logarithmic and exponential functions are inverses of one another. This is a very big topic in mathematics. So when you study a log um, or exponential uh, equations, you're also going to study logarithmic equations. But uh, in this particular problem, we don't have to use logarithms to solve. Okay. So even if you don't know what that what a logarithm is, you could still solve this problem using the techniques I'm going to show you here in just one second. Okay, so again, first things first, you know, uh, when I give you the problem or when you see a problem, you got to just use pattern recognition and try to determine, hey, what type of equation is this? What do I need to be doing? Uh, so that's the first thing. Now, the second thing I want you to see here is that we're dealing with uh, powers. We've got, we have one power and it's being divided by another power, okay? So we have this power being divided by this power. So we need to know something about division of powers, and this is where our next step comes in, too. And our next uh, step is to recognize uh, one of the properties of powers and exponents, okay? This is really super important stuff, and this is like basic first-year algebra uh, kind of uh, material here. Uh, now, there are other properties of powers and exponents, but here is the one that's applicable for this particular problem. So if we're trying to divide one power by another power, so the rule is like a to the n uh, being divided by a to the m, that's equal to a to the n minus m. But what does that mean? Well, a is the base, okay? So if the bases are the same, we can subtract the exponents. The numerator exponent comes first and the denominator exponent becomes second. So let's take a look at an example of this property. So if I have 3 to the 10th, and when I'm divided by 3 to the 4th, notice that the bases are the same, okay? Well, if the bases are the same, then I can apply this rule. If uh, the bases are not the same, let's suppose that this down here was like a 2, okay? If I had like a 2 to the 4th, now I could not do this problem because these bases are not the same. But if they are the same, you're like, oh, I can do this problem. So 3 to the 10th divided by 3 to the 4th is going to be equal to 3. Okay, that's what the rule states. And then 10 minus 4. Remember, it's the numerator exponent uh, first and then the denominator uh, exponent second we're going to take away from. So that's 3, 10 minus 4, which, of course, is 3 to the 6th power. And this makes sense because 3 to the 10th means what? It means 3 times itself 10 times. I got a bunch of 3s up here in the numerator. And I'm divided by 3 to the 4th, which is 4 3s down here. Right, be multiplied by itself. Uh, 3 times uh, 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4. 3s uh, three be multiplied. I can cross-cancel these 3s with uh, 4 3s up in the numerator. And I'm left with still 6 um, 3s, which, of course, is 3 to the 6th power. So the rule makes sense. So we're going to want to apply this uh, rule here. Why? Because... Notice I have the same bases, right? So I have 2 and 2. That's like a and a or 3 and 3. So I can clean this uh, uh, expression up here, this division of power. So we're going to have to take that step, and let's go ahead and do this right now. Okay, so here is the problem. We're like, okay, it's an exponential function. I got some powers going on. I'm going to apply this property because uh, the bases are the same. So this is where experience comes in. Notice how I'm doing this here. I have 2 and I have uh, the numerator uh, exponent, which is x minus 1. Notice how I put that in parentheses, and I'm subtracting away this 3 minus 4x, the denominator exponent. But look, I have this in parentheses. Now, you know, some of you would just be like, oh, it's this minus 3 minus 4x. If you just write it this way, this, will, this is a very common mistake, okay? So many people will have the general idea how to do this problem, but they're going to get it wrong at this stage right here, okay? So this is where experience comes in. Anytime you're dealing with sums or differences in algebra, put parentheses around these expressions, okay? Very, very important stuff because here now, because you have these parentheses, this negative is going to get distributed to this, this 3 and this negative 4. So the resulting expression is going to be 2 to the x minus 1, Okay, this is going to be minus 3, and then minus times minus, or negative times negative is positive, positive 4x. Okay, if you didn't have parentheses, you would still have that minus 4x there, and of course, it would cause you to have the wrong answer. All right, now let's go ahead and take the next step here and combine like terms. We have x 
and 4x, which of course is 5x, and a negative 1 and minus 3 is negative 4. Okay, so now we're at this stage. We have a basic lovely exponential equation. So how can we solve this problem? Well, uh, you, again, you could use logarithms to solve this problem, but this is not that difficult. Matter of fact, it's downright easy to solve without the aid of a calculator, without logarithms. And I'm going to show you this uh, steps or the steps to get to the solution easily in just one second. But uh, before I do this, before I show you these steps, I would love for you to take the step and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much. If you're new to my channel and if you're getting any value out of my content, uh, you know, my passion is to try to give you clear and understandable instruction. And I'm trying to teach you things that you're not going to find in uh, math textbooks. OK, uh, you know, they might be kind of hidden things. Uh, math text or math textbooks and stuff are great. Uh, and I collect I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of textbooks. But here's the one thing in textbooks that they can't do. They can't translate to you and emphasize, you know, common mistakes, the things that students do. This is what I try to do. I try to bring experience to the subject. So anytime I suggest something to you, like, hey, don't do this, do that, this is decades and decades and decades of the school of hard knocks and math. I've made the mistakes and I've graded tens of thousands of papers. So, you know, again, you know, when you do subscribe, you'll get access to my newest stuff. Anyways, let's continue on with the problem. All right, so here we go. So we have 2 to the uh, 5x minus 4 is equal to 16. So we're dealing with an exponential equation. And for those of you that are, are at the level of math where you do, you do know how to solve uh, exponential equations with logarithms, you'd be like, well, I'll just take the log of both sides. And yes, you would get the right answer. Okay. And generally, that is the approach you want to take. But if we don't have our calculator, we don't have access to our lovely log button. Okay. Now I am old enough to remember just as a little side note here before we were using calculators back in the good old days in the 1970s and uh, yeah, early 80s, 1970s, uh, you would have to go in the back of your textbook and it would have these little like charts for logarithms and trigonometric functions. Can you imagine that? Oh, that was the good old days indeed. Okay. But nevertheless, we don't have our calculator, so we can't uh, reference our log button. So how do you solve this problem? Well, here is the deal, okay? Notice we have an equation. We have base 2 here. So anytime you have any powers going on, what you want to try to do, if possible, is make all the powers or all the values express them such that they have the same base. So what I'm talking about here is this. I have 2 to the 5x minus 4, and I have 16. So you want to just kind of look and say, well, can I think of 16? Is it, is it possible I can express uh, 16 uh, where 2 is the base? Because I want you want to write everything with the same base if possible. And you look at this, and you're like, of course, because yeah, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times itself 4 times is, in fact, 16. So we want to write 16 as 2 to the 4th. And now that we have an equation... And these two things are the same. These bases are the same. This is going to become very, very easy to solve. Okay. Let me show you this so uh, you know we're not caught up with you know these expressions. If I have two to the box is equal to two to the triangle, well, if this value is equal to this value, and I'm taking two to some power, and that's whatever power that is, it's the same thing as two to this power. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that these exponents are the same. They must be the same if this is to hold true. And that's the case here. These exponents, or we can equate these exponents because now the bases are the same. Okay. So, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at the problem. You're like, oh, yeah, two and two. So these right here must be the same. So all we have to do is to solve this basic equation. 5x minus 4 uh, is equal to 4. And now we're back to like super basic algebra and we can solve this pretty easily. What we're going to do is just add four to both sides of the equation. So I get 5x is equal to 8. Then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 5 and I get uh, x is equal to 8 over 5. And you turn it into your teacher and they'll be like, wow, you are fantastic. There's your A+. Plus. Matter of fact, you know, just take the rest of the year off. I'm not sure what you're doing. You must be watching that guy on YouTube. Uh, but nevertheless... 
you know, to know how to do a problem like this without a calculator, you're going to have to, you know, uh, you know, be taught how to do it, right? You know, you can look in a textbook, uh, but textbooks, and there's a lot of great textbooks out there. They might cover one or two examples or some uh, other programs might cover, you know, one or two example problems. See, in my, uh, especially my math courses, I cover a wide variety of problems because you need to see a lot of different varieties of basic problems, challenging problems, different scenarios. That's the way you get better at math. In other words, you have to practice, but you can't practice this stuff unless you get clear and understandable instruction. And that is what I am uh, passionate about. It's really to teach in a way that's non-textbook-like, if you will. Okay, not to knock uh, textbooks, but I try to emphasize you know, how to avoid common mistakes and do things that are really going to set you up for success in math. Now, if you need additional help with exponential equations or this level of algebra, uh, I'll leave links to my most popular uh, courses in the description. So something like this would be like an Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus, but uh, I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel as well on uh, this topic and, of course, much, much more. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.